Together, they teach and care for more than half a million students. Now, four of Canada's biggest school boards are going after the social media giants, each launching its own lawsuit against Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram and Facebook to the tune of $4.5 billion. Among their allegations that these companies have knowingly and or negligently disrupted and fundamentally changed the school learning and teaching climate by creating and sustaining prolific and or compulsive use of their products by students. They say it's rewired the way children think. I'm talking about things like emotional dysregulation, lack of attention, inability to concentrate, but also things like Um, aggressive behaviors rising very dramatically and quickly. Hundreds of similar legal proceedings have been launched by the school boards in the U.S. and Florida just moved to ban social media for kids under 14. Not all of these things will stick, but I think what's happening is governments, parents, school boards are trying lots of different things to, to make the student experience as they grow up better. Right? So they're less distracted, they're more focused, and they're able to learn and participate in the world the way we want to. In a statement to CBC News, Snapchat says its app is different than others, focused on helping users communicate with their close friends, and has no traditional public likes or comments. TikTok highlighted its safeguards such as parental controls and an automatic 60-minute screen time limit for users under 18. But this parent isn't necessarily buying it. If they're not going to make voluntary changes, then maybe doing it through the courts is the most effective way. I think the evidence is showing that there's clear uh, relationships to anxiety, depression, with outcomes like self-harm and loneliness. Deanna, what's the sense of how likely they are to win these lawsuits? Erica, some of the experts say school boards are probably not too likely to get those $4.5 billion, certainly not anytime soon. Tussles with social media companies have proven tricky even for the federal government. And some of the lawsuits launched by the U.S. school boards are almost one year old with no resolution in sight. That said, experts also say that launching this lawsuit is a powerful statement to everyone, so from social media companies, politicians, parents. It says we know what's going on and we know who who's responsible for it. Thanks for this. Deanna Sumanik johnson reporting in Toronto. As you heard from Deanna, the lawsuits refer to social media apps affecting young brains. Thomas Dagla looks at what research shows and what parents can do. With social media giants keeping their detailed algorithms secret, there's no way to fully gauge why platforms deliver certain content to certain users. But teens know full well, somehow, those apps keep them hooked. They are pretty addictive. I I really couldn't say that they're not. Yes, very. Super. Yeah, yeah. Super addictive. And it's no trivial habit. Study after study has examined the impact of social media on behavior. With Ontario's Western University even using brain imaging, to research how all that screen time is shaping kids' minds. These neurochemical changes are are the same as what we see in in addiction. They don't really have the necessary um, brain machinery to be able to, to manage constant rewards. In other words, seeing those comments and seeking more likes can prove dangerous for teens, with more scrolling linked to aggression, depression, and anxiety. There's families of In Washington recently, as big tech bosses were grilled about harms to young users, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg rose to apologize to parents, but he insists. Overall, teens tell us that this is a positive part of their lives. As four Ontario school boards sue social media giants for billions, parents are being prompted to talk to their kids. If we're aware that, you know, when I watch this kind of content, I don't feel great about myself, we can intervene. You can change the algorithm. You can start searching out other content that's making you feel good. Trouble is, users can only do so much. The burden ultimately rests on technology companies, and we need laws and policies that are going to do that. There's a lot riding on what users see on those apps, with the social media industry said to be worth more than $150 billion. Ontario school boards are demanding a bit of that money to mitigate harms. Thomas Dagg, CBC News, Toronto.